Hello everyone, Miss Andrula here. And what I wanted to start off with today was reminding you that we are working on a water bottle design challenge in our class. And so one of the things we want to do is think about how are we going to design this water bottle or this new type of bottle that does not use plastic materials that is better for our environment. And so I wanted to start you off with a short video um, that talks a little bit about computer-aided design and how we're going to be creating these new water bottles for our challenge. And then we'll do a small activity. So let me pull up the video quickly and we will get started. CAD, computer-aided design. It's the cornerstone for how we design and build things. But how did it come into being? What are the historical milestones that got us to this point? And where is it going next? To find out, we're going all the way back to the beginning of time. No, no, we don't need to go back that far. Let's start in 1861, France. French chemist Alphonse Louis Poitevin discovers a process involving sunlight and a substance found in gum that allows original architectural drawings to be accurately reproduced. The process creates a negative copy where black lines turn white and blank space turns blue, leaving users with a blue print. Je la fais esprit. Suddenly, designs can be easily replicated and distributed, allowing everyone to work from the same design without fear of errors in reproduction. It's no small coincidence that the second great industrial revolution starts just a few years later. In 1936, British codebreaker Alan Turing invents the Turing machine, which becomes the basis for the modern computer. Then, in 1961, renowned computer scientist Dr. Patrick J. Hanrat joins General Motors Research Laboratories and helps develop DAC, Design Automated by Computer. But it's Douglas T. Ross, computer scientist pioneer and father of computerized machining, that coins the term CAD. Let's call it CAD. Okay. Hooray! Acronyms aside, to this day, it is Patrick Hanratty who's known as the father of CAD. In 1971, while Intel is busy introducing the microprocessor to the world, Hanratty introduces the CAD software known as Automated Drafting and Machinery, or ADAM for short. An estimated 90% of today's commercial drafting software can trace their roots back to ADAM. In 1977, Katia, the first 3D CAD system, launches, running only on exclusive proprietary hardware. But by 1981, with the release of the IBM PC, desktop computing becomes affordable to the masses for the first time, and we see the beginning of the boom that would soon follow. On its heels, in 1982, John Walker founds Autodesk, and later that year introduces AutoCAD, the first significant CAD program for the PC, changing the world of design forever. Over the next decade, huge strides are made in CAD-based software. 3D modeling is introduced, opening the door to innovative design solutions, like BIM and digital prototyping. <laughs> Settle down, class. Over the next few years, Autodesk introduces a steady stream of game-changing features, further embedding AutoCAD in the design industry as an indispensable tool of the trade. Class dismissed. From 2010 on, advances continue to be made including a web-based mobile version of AutoCAD that frees designers to work from anywhere, and Autodesk Recap, technology that allows users to create designs using real-world data captured from photos and laser scans. This is the evolution of CAD, from blueprint to desktop to cloud. Today, we see the Internet of Things continue to provide data to build smarter cities and better products. And eventually, generative design tools will use the infinite computing power of the cloud to change the very way we work, as our computers will begin to have opinions of their own and even begin to create designs for us. We'll have reached the point where the term computer-aided design truly means what it says. The tools of design have come a long way, but the story of CAD is really just beginning. So now that we saw that quick video, and before we get into any type of designing or anything else, I want to do a little bit of an opening activity where we can all kind of gather our thoughts together about CAD, computer-aided design, and how we're going to build our 3D models. So we're going to use something called Padlet, which you can see here on my screen. And basically what this allows you all to do is write down a little bit about what you already know and it says it right here, post one thing you already know about CAD and prototyping, and one thing that you would maybe still like to know. So you can use what you might already know from outside of this class, or you can use what you've learned from the video, and then one thing you are still wondering about. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the shareable link to all of you. And once you open up the link, I'll show you exactly how it works. Once you open up this link, you can actually paste the link into your web browser and it's gonna bring you up to our Padlet. And so from here, you're going to be able to post and all you have to do is click the, the plus sign and you can type in your post, right? So you can say, um, you can just put your name actually at the top to, to show me who is posting. Sorry. And then you can write down your thing. So one thing I already know, maybe is prototyping can be used for engineers to plan buildings, right? And maybe one thing I thing I want to know how what maybe what type of materials can be used in 3D modeling and printing. That might be something you're wondering about. When you click publish, it will just pop up on the page. You can go ahead and like and comment on each other's, um, but the idea is just for us to all get an understanding of what you already know, what you'd like to know, and for all of us to see, see each other's work. So you can go ahead and get started on that, and we will get started with our lesson very shortly.